Hello, I'm Pedram. Welcome to my channel. This is the first video of object-oriented design with a spring. In this series of videos, uh, we're gonna see what the principles of object-oriented programming are and how to apply them using the spring framework. And the language we are going to use is Kotlin. If you're already familiar with Java or another JVM based language or any other high level programming language, you shouldn't have any problem following the course. To begin with, we're going to see what solid principles are. Solid principles is the abbreviation for five different principles. First of them is single responsibility principle. The second one is open close principle. The third one is disk of substitution principle. The fourth is interface segregation principle. And the fifth is dependency inversion principle. Now we're gonna see uh, what each one of these are. The S. The S stands for single responsibility principle, which states that each class in a program should have only one responsibility. And to put it in other words, it means that each class has, should have only one reason to change. So for example, you shouldn't have a class that changes each time you change the business logic and also each time you make a change in a technology for example switching from postgres sql to mysql the o in solid principles stands for open closed principle which means classes should be open for extension or programs should be open for extension but closed for modification mostly classes uh, one tool that enables the open closed principle is the strategy pattern, which we are going to see throughout the course. For example, imagine a reader interface, which can have multiple implementations that read data from the web, from a stream, from a website, or from different sources, and you have a class that only depends on the reader interface rather than concrete implementations like file reader or web reader. The L in uh, solid principles is stands for disk of substitution principle, which states that subclasses should uh, provide all the behavior and functionality that one would expect from their superclasses. Uh, an example of this is that uh, for the methods of the subclasses, the preconditions shouldn't be strengthened and the postconditions shouldn't be weakened. So if the parent class is able to process an object with certain conditions, uh, the subclass shouldn't have tighter conditions for that object. For example, if the superclass is able to process null values as its input, the subclass should also be able to process null values as its input. Now we go to the I in solid principles, which stands for interface segregation principle, which says that clients shouldn't be exposed to the methods that they don't need. And uh, one way to have this achieved is to break the larger interfaces into a smaller ones. So the interfaces should be cohesive and uh, serve a small pieces of functionality. So rather than having a large interface, you would be having uh, a couple of a small interfaces that serve only a single responsibility not only exposing one method necessarily, but they would uh, serve a single responsibility. Now we go to the D in solid principles, which states that 
uh, which stands for Dependency Inversion Principle, which says that high-level abstractions uh, shouldn't depend on low-level implementation details or low-level abstractions. For example, business logic shouldn't depend on the choice of database. The choice of database should depend on uh, business logic. And the thing which is important about dependency inversion is the distinction between dependency inversion and dependency injection. Dependency inversion is the principle that I just described. Dependency injection is a design pattern that uh, separates the instantiation of an object from the usage of that object. We will see how dependency injection behaves and how it is used throughout the course with the spring. But uh, to put it briefly, uh, when you have a class A, for example, which depends on class B, instead of having class A instantiate an instance of class B, you would have a third class inject an instance of B into the constructor of class A, for example. And this lets us to change the behavior of the program dynamically at the runtime and also helps us have better accessibility. This is the way we can use mocks, for example. And if you haven't heard about mocks, uh, I would explain them thoroughly when we get to the testing points, testing section of this tutorial. That was it for the first video. Hope to see you soon.